Spirit, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Kingdom Petition. Good night. Good night, everyone. Welcome, welcome to our mm -hmm. midweek refresher. Good evening. Welcome to our midweek refresher. And so glad to have you here. Welcome to those who are on Facebook, as well as those who are on Zoom. Though we are few in number, Jesus is here with us tonight. Amen. 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 Yes. So I'll just begin with a few worship songs to get us in the mood and you know, let us just lay aside every weight that so easily beset us, all the things that happened during the day or the first part of the week, you know, so that we can get in that mood where we can hear something from God tonight. Amen. He is here, hallelujah. He is here, amen. He is here, holy, holy. I will bless his name again. He is here, listen closely. Hear him calling out your name. He is here. You can touch him. You will never be the same. He is here. Hallelujah. He he's given Jesus Christ his son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us and now let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich because of what the Lord has done for us. Give thanks. I just want to be where you are, drawing daily in your presence. 
I don't want to worship from afar. Draw me near to where you are. Mm -hmm. I want to be where you are. Dwelling in your presence. Feasting at your table. Surrounded by your glory in your presence. That's where I always want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be. I just want to be with you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Amen, Lord. I just want to be where you are in your presence. Uh, we're going to have prayer at this time. Pastor Branner. Let's pray. Eternal Father, our Lord, we are truly grateful this evening that we can find ourselves encircled by your grace, joined together as a people, huddled around the fire of fellowship. We pray, O oh God, that the warming presence of your spirit would enjoin our hearts together that we might experience yet again the promise because there are two or three gathered in your name, you have promised to manifest yourself in the midst. And so, oh God, we thank you tonight. We bless you tonight. You, we say hallelujah to you tonight. Hallelujah. So join yourself, oh God, we pray. May your manifest glory be felt and seen. May this experience be one that labels our heart with yet another conquering sense of overwhelming joy that fills our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor, for that prayer. Thank you, Sister Christiana, for leading out with our praise for this evening. I'm going to share with you for the next uh, few minutes on um, still continuing on the theme of forgiveness. And uh, today I want to talk on the subject from victim to victor, from victim to victor. And I'd like for us to, for a moment, focus on Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 17 through 19. And it says, repay no one evil for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Live peaceably with all men men. Verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. From victim to victor. You know, often when we feel like we have been treated with injustice or we have been wronged or hurt by someone, there is often that overwhelming feeling of the need to get back at the person who meted out the injustice, the, the person who hurt us, 
a person who caused us pain. Uh, you know, the truth be told, all of us have had those types of feelings where we feel like, you know, in order for me to feel better, I need to get back at you. It's what we call revenge, revenge, vengeance. Except vengeance usually doesn't have a very good outcome. And the truth is that we're doing more damage when we hold on to those feelings, when we hold on to the negative feelings and uh, engender negative thoughts about the person who has wronged us or wronged our loved ones, did something to hurt our loved ones. When we continue to have those negative thoughts and feelings, they they do hurt. Uh, there, there is a simple truth that uh, we need to keep in mind as we think about the issue of revenge. And it's simply this, vengeance hurts me more than it hurts the other person. Vengeance hurts me more than it hurts the other person. I'm, I'm doing more harm to myself when I hold on to those feelings. And I'm not living the best me. I'm not experiencing a, a life of peace when I hold on to those feelings, the need to exact revenge, to get back at the other person. And the sooner we understand that vengeance hurts me more than it hurts the other person, then it would lead us to another uh, simple truth that is related to this, and that is forgiveness helps me more than it does the other person. Often we feel that if we forgive, we are releasing the person from the wrong that they did us. We, they are being absolved from the evil that they perpetrated on us. And so it's often difficult to move to that space of forgiveness and and so we hold on to it and there wells up in us this need to get back and for some of us interestingly we don't necessarily get back by by hitting back or trying to cut them or shoot them or or, or say nasty things to them sometimes the way we get back is when we silence the person out. And we do not see that as a part of the continuum of anger. When we get to the point where we are so resentful that we shut the person out, that we isolate from the person and have nothing to do with them. And I'm not suggesting that in every case we have to be chummy chummy with the person who has hurt us, but just understand that you need to be able to, in that place inside of you, determine whether or not you are carrying resentment and that your behavior is an act of vengeance, even though you are not actively doing something to hurt the person, the passive be behavior could be an act of vengeance. You see, when we are hurt or when we feel like we are the victims of injustice, we have two choices. One, we can blame the offender and place all the responsibility for improving our lives on that person. They did it. They are wrong. They shouldn't have done that to me. Uh, how could they do that to me? And, and you blame the person for, for, for what has happened. And rightly, they, they need to uh, be held accountable. But then when you get into the blame game where your focus is solely on the person and not on the act, then you're really in a blame game. OK, and so you have a choice. You can blame and say, OK, it's their responsibility. They did it. They need to fix it. They need to make sure that my life gets back in order. 
You can do that or you can forgive. And when you forgive, you shift the responsibility to act from that person to yourself. So now you take on the responsibility as to how you are going to act, how you are going to respond. And, and responsibility, as Dr. Tibbetts puts it, is simply having the ability to choose your response. Responsibility, having the ability to choose your response and determine your outcome, determine the path that you will take even in the midst of your pain and your hurt and your anger and your disappointment. You still have the ability to choose your response. That has not been taken from you. You see, when you blame, when you get caught up in the blame game, what you're really doing is making yourself the victim. And in the blame game, as you become this victim, what you're in fact saying is that the person who hurt me, the person who uh, abused me is evil and I'm innocent. I'm innocent and they're evil. And so we begin to see the person as everything that is bad, as everything that is ugly, as everything that is, 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 is dirty. And we see ourselves as good. When we get stuck in the blame game, we make ourselves the victim. But tonight I want to say to those of you who are listening here on the Zoom room and on Facebook, that you don't have to be a victim. You don't have to be a victim because you can forgive and take responsibility for your response to whatever offense that was meted out to you. You can take the resp responsibility for your life. Understand that your actions define who you are. Never allow someone else to define who you are. Okay? The way you behave is going to say a lot about who you are. But in Christ, in Christ, in the kingdom, we are focusing on the theme this year, this year, uh, the kingdom in you in 2022. And if you would have the kingdom in you, then it is important that you get to that place of forgiveness, that you get out of the blame game for whatever hurt that is um, perpetrated on you and take responsibility for your life. Some people are stuck. They, 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 they can grow, they can't advance, they can't hold down a job, they are stuck in addiction, they, they are, are, are stuck in, in, in meanness, they just can't move because somebody else is determining their life. Someone else is defining their life by some action that that somebody did to them. And so tonight I say to all of us here, let's forgive and take responsibility for our lives. Recognizing that how we act, how we behave says a lot about who we are. So how do we get out of the the blame game. How do we get out of the blame game? I'm just going to share three things with you, and then we're going to move to our time of petition this evening. And number one, give up the all or nothing thinking. The all or nothing <laughs> thinking is, is, is a very dangerous way to perceive life and to see other people. This is when you see the other person as just all bad. When you give up the all or nothing thinking, you are able to see the other person as both good and bad because the truth is no one is perfect. And if you look closely in the mirror, you are not perfect either because we all have room for improvement. improvement. We all have areas uh, of, uh, uh, in our lives where we can grow and we can become better. We, we all have little attitudes and quirks and 
idiosyncrasies that sometimes are very uh, jarring to other people and we hurt other people. But if we see another person as all bad, then we will never see the good in them. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that there is some good in the worst of us. And there is some bad even in the best of us. We are this complex combination of good and bad and, and evil and good are struggling inside of us and often the evil wins out. And we act in ways that are unkind, that are hurtful, that are mean, that are hateful, unchristlike. And if we recognize that we are all in the struggle together, then you won't see the other person as all bad, but, but there is some, some good in them. But while you do that, make sure that you do not blame yourself either, because that would just be the blame game in reverse that you also recognize your own humanity and that whatever the situation, whatever the hurt, the present or past hurt, that you are able to give it over to Jesus Christ and allow him to do his work of healing in your heart. So give up the all or nothing thinking. None of us is all bad. And then number two, distinguish between intent and impact. Intent is why the person hurt you and the impact how the hurt affect you often when we are hurt by someone because we do not have the opportunity in most instances to have a healthy dialogue we begin to judge the motive and we begin to come up with reasons why the person did what they did and we begin to focus on the person and how evil they are and why they hurt us. Last week, I spoke about compassion. And as Dr. Branner said, compassion simply means suffering with. And sometimes it's important to get into that space where that person might be emotionally to try to understand why they behave the way they do. And it will allow you to have some compassion towards them so that you can move to that place of forgiveness. You understand why they do what they do. And not just that they are evil, you know, Sometimes when someone says something to us, uh, we, we, could, we could process it as, okay, maybe this person is really trying to help me. I, I, I don't feel good about what they said. You know, I don't feel good about them criticizing me. It, you know, it doesn't sit well with me, but maybe they are trying to help me. You, you could process it that way. Or you could say, oh, they just think they're better than I am, or they just want to embarrass me. You could process it that way. But if you focus on the action and not on the motive, it makes it easier to move away from a blame game and move from wanting to, to hurt someone who hurt you to now moving to a place of forgiveness and healing. So, distinguish between the intent and the impact. And then finally, lower your expectations of others. The truth is no one will always do what you expect them to do. When you have lowered expectations, it minimizes the chances of you feeling disappointment. People will always make mistakes. And the truth is, People don't have to do what you want them to do. You could beg them and you could prod them and you keep repeating over and over. You keep making the same request. You keep asking for the same things over and over. They don't have to do it. And if you've been asking for a change for a year, two years, however long, and it has not changed, 
chances are it might not change now. And so now you have to get to the place where you lower your expectation so that they, that, that person not doing what you expect them to do will not have such a deep impact on you. And you'll be able to look past and move beyond some of the things that have affected you. If you're going to move from victim to victory, you must recognize that forgiveness helps you to release or at least revise your expectations of others. Forgiveness helps you to release or revise your expectations of others because they may not do what you want them to do what you expect them to do and people will mess up from time to time they will make mistakes sometimes they may be trying but they may just be struggling and just can't get it right and it's important to get to that place where you lower your expectations so that you can move to a place of peace so that you do not always feel like you're the victim but that you have victory in Christ Jesus. In Romans chapter 12, where I read from, in verse 20, the verse that follows, it's, it says, Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head from victim to victor. Jesus gave a command found in Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 and 44. Jesus said this, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, I, I, I love it when Jesus says that, but I say, in other words, I'm going to negate everything that you have learned everything that you have been told, everything that you have believed, I'm going to negate that. But I say, but I say to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you from victim to victor. You've heard that it was said, but I say, and Jesus is saying to you tonight, love, bless, do good, and pray. Love, bless, do good, and pray. This is Jesus' command as it relates to how we treat those who hurt us, those who might be our enemies. In 1 John chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, it says, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. Not burdensome? Really, really, Jesus? Love your enemies? Bless those who curse you? Do good to those who hate you? And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you? That's not burdensome? You think that's easy, Lord? In your human moral strength, it's difficult. But in the spirit, it's not burdensome. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory. That's what we want tonight. This is the victory that has overcome the world. Our faith. Our faith. Believe what Jesus says. Believe in his commandments to love your enemies and to bless those who curse you and do good to those who hate you and pray for them. Have faith enough that Jesus can help you. And that is the victory. And so once you get to that place of faith, faith alone is the victory. Huh? So, 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 so what does that mean? Be before you even, uh, 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 love, faith has given you the victory. 
so that you can love. Before you even bless, your faith has given you the victory so that you can bless. Before you even do good, your faith is going to give you the victory to do good. Before you even pray, faith will give you the victory to pray. From victim to victor. Tonight, just know that you have the victory in Jesus' name. You have the victory in Jesus' name. I pray that you have been blessed uh, by what I have shared with you tonight. I am just wondering if anybody has a short testimony that they would like to share with us this evening on how you have received victory through forgiveness. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Wonderful the message Lord. here. I just sat and listened and listened and soaked it in. <clears throat> you know, uh, I'm reading the book of James, uh, taking our time and it's, Unveiling to us the uh, lifestyle that we need to absorb and live as we express the love of Jesus Christ, you know, in our daily lives, because it's not, as you said, it's not easy. It's not something that we just live and it's fine and dandy and we go about our merry way. Every step is a struggle, is a reason, is a... <laughs> is an encounter and um, you know, sometimes we lose, sometimes we win. But, you know, talking about my wife and I, we, we are, you know, uh, building a, a, a home, um, a dream, so to speak, dream home that the Lord placed upon our hearts. And, uh, you know, it, it is a miracle the way it was brought about, but, also a struggle because we never did it before. And the things that we've learned or are still learning, um, uh, they are like uh, new, you know, we have had our, our own house before, but never anything we, we've, we've purchased from others who might have done it for themselves. We just accepted it and, and joyfully, happily just, you know, received it and lived in it for, for over 30 years. Um, but this one, uh, we were able to see it from the very foundation, from the very land to the very uh, sticks, the everything, foundation, everything that was built and we're there all the time. Uh, but some things started to uh, be exposed that we didn't dream of and they told us how, yeah, that's how it is when you're building. Uh, there's so many things that will be against you. Like the, the builders would do things, they promise you one thing, but something else crops up. And if you don't pay attention, then you could be uh, uh, deceived, so to speak. Um, we were told that we should go there every day, every day, make sure you'll be there every day, see what's going on. But it got to the point where so many things started happening and it was building up and we we're becoming um, burned and anxious and sometimes unhappy. Um, and it's at the point now where we'll be soon be moving in. It will soon be turned over to us. And, um, you know, there was a time when we were so overjoyed, looking forward for that time to just go in and, you know, in a different place and enjoy it. But to be honest, uh, you know, it is just a, a roller coaster every moment as it gets closer. It's less than a month that we'll be moving in, but it just seemed like uh, it would never finish. And we're just taking liberty off, you know. <laughs> um, as you'd say in Jamaica, you're taking liberty of me, you know. And I wrote, uh, I wrote, uh, uh, I told my wife, I'm going to write. I like to write when I, when I can express myself, take the time to do it and go it over again and make adjustments just to make sure that it's done right. Sometimes the anger is there, but would, I, I remember writing that um, email that I would post it and, and uh, the night passed. I, didn't, I wanted my wife to look at it 
And she didn't even look at it yet. But in going to my bed that night, we were supposed to see the builders uh, on Tuesday. And I um, went to my bed and I said, Lord, you know, I know life is, is, is a set of challenges, but I want to live, you know, the way you want me to live. I want not to have my emotions to take control of my behavior. And um, I said, I, I want to trust you so much that I can leave it in your hands and not to bring, uh, create an enemy between us and the builders. And so we decided, when I got up the morning, we got ready, wasn't far from home. I told my wife, I said, I'm not gonna mail this. Um, we wanna go and meet with the, the builders and let the Lord lead. Just put it in his hand, let him lead. Uh, point out some things that we have seen. Um, we're saying to ourselves, how could they see these and not saying or making any corrections? And so we went over there and we looked around and we talked to the gentleman and asked him questions, pointed out some stuff to him. And he was so uh, responsive, humbly responsive, I would say, you know. And at the end of it all, coming back home, I felt so relieved. I said, man, I'm so glad that I did not send this email because I pointed out some stuff and I was just putting things that I thought was the case. Could have been the case still, but, you know, uh, when I listen to what you said this evening, um, you know, we don't have to say the things we want to say or we don't have to act the way we feel, but we can allow Christ to live in us um, so that what is portrayed is better than what we thought. You know, what the Spirit do through us would be better. Um, and it brought peace. I mean, there's a raging going on, a storm still going on, and the evil one is still saying, do this, do that, do the other. Yes. But, but, but life, life is like this. We, every step of the way, we have a, con uh, a decision to make. Every step and a decision can be either a glorious or destructive, you know. And, and this is, even at this stage of my life, is the thing that I enjoy seeing the end of it all. Because I know, just like you said, I know that, um, God will work it out to his good and we will rejoice. I will tell you guys a story later on how it all happened and, and what I know they're expecting because one of the things the man says to me was, um, I don't want to destroy our relationship. I don't want at the end of it all that our relationship be destroyed. And so life is like this. I would encourage all of us. Challenges are there. We're going to be faced with all kinds of things. But the beauty about it is when we can allow the spirit to control our intentions and our attitudes. And in the end, we ourselves feel good about it because we listen to him and he worked through us and it worked for our good, you know and for his glory. And, and that's just my, it's not done yet, but it's a writing, it's a scripted story, you know, that I think will eventually give honor and glory to the most high and bring joy to our hearts. That's my expectation. But that's what forgiveness, that's what loving, kindness, and all those things can do as a citizen of the kingdom of God. Thank you for sharing your testimony. Uh, brother Alvin. We are going to, does anybody else want to share? If not, we're going to take some prayer requests now. Okay, what can I do? Uh, Sister Christiana? Yes. Oh, I can barely hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Um, I was thinking while you were speaking that one of the hardest things to forgive is when somebody takes your heart then and rips it to shreds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In Jamaica, you know, we say that, you know, we prefer the 
the, the licks then because they will cool off. But when it comes on to the heart, it's, it's very hard. And I went through um, a period of having to learn to forgive my husband for what he did to me and our daughter. And I remember in those initial times, um, I was so bitter. I was so angry and resentful. And it, I mean, it's almost like the bitterness was seeping out of my veins. And I, I began to just not recognize my own self. You know, my true character seemed to be falling away. And it was just, you know, if, if a fly landed on me, <laughs> I got angry. I was, I was like, sitting around waiting for something bad to happen to him to say, hey, see what you did and now it's your turn and so forth. But the Holy Spirit, that, that kind of thinking really isn't sustainable. And I began to allow the Holy Spirit to work in me, in me. And I reached to a point where I started think, thinking to myself and realizing that, you know, me waiting on him to suffer that was a non-issue because somebody who doesn't have the love of Jesus Christ is already suffering to the point where they can do these kinds of things to another human being who loves them, you know? And I began to have so much pity on him and so much compassion that I had surprised even myself. And I began to pray and fast for him. And that set me free when I started to have compassion and to just realize that somebody has grown to this age and has never known true love. And that resonated with me up until today. And I, I recently had a, a very civil conversation with him recently where he said to me, thank you, Chrissy. Thank you for all the prayers you've been praying for me. And this is a man I have not spoken to in this fashion in over two years because we don't speak. And he said that, and I was like, wow. <laughs> you know, I never told him that I was praying for him or anything like that, but he said that and he said, oh, I'm getting my healing. You know, so I, I want to thank God for forgiveness and for showing me the way to let go, to surrender all. You know, Christ wants us to be free and light so that we can worship him you know, and, and, and give him the glory and our lives can reflect his light. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. Christy, for, for sharing that. Looks like you have gotten to a place of victory and you will continue to experience victory as you continue to uh, hold on to Jesus and believe in what he has said and what he's commanded and to live that life of just loving and blessing and doing good and praying for. That is where he wants us to be. Thank you so Amen. much for, for sharing that. All righty. I think we could move on now to our, our prayer requests. Uh, we, we do have... Uh, a, a list of people that we are praying for. Does anybody have any request here tonight? Any special request? Yes, I have one. Um, pray, please pray for my daughter. Um, she, I carried her to get her eyes tested the other day because she couldn't see properly at school and she was diagnosed with um, astigmatism and neurocytomies. I just want you to keep her in your prayers, you know, wouldn't want that to get any worse. So, yes, and also for her behavior, she's in primary school and, you know, it's a little bit challenging. Yes. Uh, Azalea. Azalea, yes. Okay. It's hard being a single mother and having to raise a daughter without a father figure. So just keep her in prayers for me. Will do, will do. Anybody else? Uh, 
I want to pray for, for my builders, the whole team. Just pray that they'll um, listen to the voice of the Most High and that they'll be uh, transparent, be honest. Okay. Pray for the builders. Well do, well do. All right. Let me see if there's anything in the, the comments on Facebook. I don't see any there. So we can we can move to prayer now. You'll see on the screen the folks that we're still praying for. Uh, continue to lift up Lynette and Roger Thomas and the Davila family. Uh, the Davila family... Uh, they're, they're Lynette, Lynette's brother's family. Uh, still dealing with the loss, even though they have buried their mom, they're still, still in mourning. Kathleen Koch, Elaine Robinson. These people are struggling with their health. Angelia, Dennis Alexander. We want to keep praying for our families. COVID. Pray for Eden Home Ministries. And then we want to remember those who are struggling with sickle cell disease. S Sister Mishka Hamilton, Brother Kessner Sterling, and Sister Lenora Rice. And we'll continue to remember them along with the two requests that we have tonight. Christiana's daughter for her sight and her behavior. And Brother Alvin for the builders, we want to keep them in our prayers. Anybody else? All righty, then we are just going to, um, I, I will do one prayer. I pray for Brother Alvin and his builders. And then I'm going to ask Alvin if you would pray for um, Christiana and her daughter. And then I'm going to ask Pastor Branner if he would close us out. Okay. All right. So I will go ahead and get started. Father God, we thank you so much for the opportunity to still come to you and to pray. You have told us in your words that we do not need to be fearful or intimidated, but we can come boldly to the throne of grace where we can find help in time of need. We thank you for the message of tonight that we can move from being victims to being victors. Lord, help us not to be judgmental of other people's motives even when they hurt us and that we will get away from the blame game and making ourselves victims but that we can move towards victory through the power of forgiveness thank you lord for the insights that have been shared and lord help us that we will listen to your command so that those who hurt us, those who use us, those who curse us, we can still love them, we can still bless them, we can still do good for them, and we can still pray for them. So for anyone who has enemies tonight, Lord, anyone who has been hurt, God, I, I pray tonight, I pray for those who have hurt them. And I pray, oh God, that they will come to a place of repentance and that they will uh, get to that place where they stop hurting. Mm -hmm. Lord, I want to pray for those who have been hurt. Those who may have been carrying pain for a long time. Those who have been, been wounded. Those who have been abused. Oh God, I pray even now that you will just continue to your, your work of healing in there in their hearts and in their minds and in their spirits, oh God. That tonight in a special way that you will move the needle just a little bit further. Mm. 
so that they will no longer feel like victims, but they will have victory in the name of Jesus. We thank you for Brother Alvin. Thank you for the testimony that he shared in his experience with his builders. He has been wronged at several points, but Lord, thank you for the victory that you have given to him to be able to have confrontation, have conversation with the builders. And thank you that you were able to bring him to that place where he could uh, have a place where he could see their humanity as well. And that he could have good feelings about them even when he was not being treated the way he expected. And so, God, I pray for those builders. I, I pray that you will touch their hearts. I pray, oh God, that you will be with them as they continue on the construction, that they will do the right things, that they will, they will honor their commitments. But more than anything, Lord, that they will surrender their hearts to you so that you could lead them into a new place. Thank you, Lord, for victory. Thank you for blessing them. Thank you for blessing Alvin. Thank you for giving him the heart of compassion and the heart of forgiveness. And I, uh, oh Lord, I pray that as they move to the finishing of this home, that Lord, that home will be blessed in a mighty way, that it will be a home that will be filled with love and peace and forgiveness, a home where those who stop by will find a place of rest, a place of joy and comfort. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Father, we continue because we just love to talk to you. We just love to know that we are talking to someone who has all of our interests at heart who will never deceive us, never lie to us, Amen. never treat us unkindly. As a matter of fact, you have partnered with your son and in your spirit, you have sent him here to pave the way for us so that we could smell, see, experience victory and live the life abundantly having a taste of what is to come in the earth made new. You have left for us some examples that we should live so others could have a taste of who you are. Uh, it's not an easy path when we think about it, but when we are committed and when we have uh, given ourselves over to you, it can become really, really enjoyable. And so I thank you for that. I thank you that we can come to you and tell you everything, not being afraid. Your son was vulnerable. He came and exposed himself just for us so that we could live. And uh, just remember one thing you told your disciples that if they wanted to follow you, they should deny themselves and take up a cross and to follow you. And so this is what we believe that we have to do also. And we're so happy to know that we're not doing it on our own. And we trust you to walk with us, to talk with us, to strengthen, to lift us up. And that's the reason why we're here, praying for Sister Christiana, a young lady who has chosen to walk with you. And... Uh, mm, when I think about her, I think about my mother who was relentless, never giving up, faced the challenges, the setbacks, having a son that she had to care for and uh, to train. And, uh, that on her own, on her own, uh, a mother who would just face it face the day, the danger, 
the challenges and just keep fighting. It's one of those things that you have given to mankind, courage, relentless courage to, to fight and never give up, become uh, so brave that they sometimes forget about the dangers that are around them. I'm asking you to touch Christiana. And I know she knows, she knows you. I know that she can trust in you. Build a relationship with you so that she can ask for whatever it is in her heart and you can give her the desire, the desires of her heart. And for her daughter, whom she's caring for by herself, without a, a, a father for her, a daddy, a husband. Lord, you can do wonders. But I just want to encourage her to continue and to look up. Always have that hope for something better, something miraculous. I know it has happened to my life. Just think, we're not paying for it. It says, come, buy of me, go, try it in the fire, buy, buy, buy without money. We can think, we can dream of anything we want in this world and don't have to pay for it because we can trust you, just leave it to you. So I'm asking you to be with her and strengthen her. Be with her young one and, and give her uh, sight. Stop that astigmatism uh, so that she may see clearly as she grows. That she may see good from evil and choose good. And that they both may walk and work together to glorify your name. Not to be afraid, not to be ashamed, but to put their trust in you. And Lord, as they dream, as they expect, may you help them that they may uh, realize the dream, that it may come true. Provide for them, protect them. And then one day, Lord, you're gonna bless them. Again, I say with the desires of their hearts and that we may rejoice knowing that you've heard. I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else feel impressed to pray before Pastor Branner closes? Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing tonight, for hearing from you the means by which we can become victors. We pray, O oh God, that the same forgiveness that was rendered to us on that old rugged cross yes. would be available in our hearts to share and give with others, that we might love our enemies and bless those that curse us and do good to them that hate us and pray for them that despitefully use us and persecute us Amen. Amen. that the measure of your strength would be walked out in our years that we might be able to demonstrate to the world that the victory that you have promised can be alive in our lives Amen. we thank you for being a part of the body of christ wherein we can draw strength one from another. We thank you for the love that you have promised to give to each of us that we might bask in the warmth of the love we have one for another. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for each of the requests that have gone forward. You know the names, Mishka, Del, uh, Del Devla, Thomas, Christiana, Dennis, Angelia, Elaine, 
Tathleen, Kesna, Lenora, for the builders, for Jean's broken shoulder, Marlene, Marlene's children. Father, you know all the needs. We merely but have to call their names and as their faces differ and their situations do as well, we know that you've got a hand of provision for every need. Hallelujah. Yes. We know that you've got an eye keen to every, every circumstance. We know that you have already gone ahead, entered our trouble and provided the solution. We just pray that we would hang on to you with both hands that our solution is on its way as we continue to trust in your holy name. I thank you for each and every one who is on tonight. We thank you for the blessed assurance of hope that we have. We thank you for every promise in your word and that, that the truth of your word will never fall to the ground. It can never falter, it can never fail. In fact, you've said and declared that you sent your word to heal us. And so we receive our healing in whatever area, whatever, whatever category of life we need it, we receive it tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And believing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in your name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From victim to victor, we are victorious in Jesus tonight. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Not hearing her. Are, are you hearing her? I'm not hearing her. Not hearing. Her. No. You you're unmuted, but we're not hearing us your sound. Are you hearing no? Yes. Yes, yes. To Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily. Live. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. To Jesus I surrender, on the at his feet I bow, worldly pleasures all forsaken, take me Jesus, take me now, I surrender all, I surrender all to be my blessed Savior, I surrender all. all to Jesus, I surrender, Lord, I give myself to thee. Fill me with thy love and power, let thy blessing fall on me. I surrender, I surrender, 
to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Surrender all. Amen. All to Jesus, I surrender. All to him, I freely give. If we surrender all to Jesus, then we, he will move us from being victims to being victors. He will move us from blaming others who hurt us to forgiving them. He will move us from focusing on the people or the motives and focus on the actions so that we can forgive those actions. I pray that you've been blessed by our kingdom petition service tonight and look forward to seeing you on next week again. For those who joined us live on Facebook, we thank you for, for joining us as well. I just wanna share a few reminders as we close out now uh, for this evening. We do meet again on next week, Wednesday, and every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Please put that on your calendar and invite someone to join you as you pray with us on Eden Home Ministries. And then on Saturday mornings at 11, we have our Kingdom Proclamation service. So we, we're inviting you to join us in the Zoom room. Uh, you see the ID there, 826-4441-6597. And the passcode is Eden. Please join us for our Kingdom Proclamation on Saturday morning. And then on Saturday afternoon, we have our uh, exciting Bible study. Right now, we are looking at the covenants, the old and the new covenants, and how the old became obsolete, and how we get to the new covenant. So that's at 2.30 on Saturday afternoon, uh, led out by brother and sister Alvin Jones. So we invite you to that. Uh, mark your calendar for February 26th. Christian Scholars Forum will be doing a third part on the Sunday law. And the question that we're looking at, will there be a Sunday law on March 10th, 2022? Will there be a Sunday law on March 10th, 2022? Dr. Branner, our own pastor here, will be leading out in that biblical theological exposition on the Sunday law. So mark your calendars for that. Again, we thank you so much for joining us for our kingdom petition this evening. And we look forward to seeing you for our next service, which is going to be on Saturday. God bless you all. Have a good night. Thank you for joining us on Facebook. And we look forward to seeing you next time. God bless you.